bulkier and more complex? How does the little roadster from Mazda keep going after more than 30 years? What's the super formula? And what are the sacrifices of a little Mazda that could? First, the things to love about the Miata. One of the things that soldiers returning from World War II brought with them is a newfound passion for the British roadster. The formula was simple. Engine in the front, power coming out of the rear tires, two seats, no top, no frills, all thrills. Despite the simplicity of that formula, it's proved an elusive target. The Mustang, Thunderbird, and Corvette were all attempts to replicate that winning formula. But Ford and Chevy couldn't shake the idea that Americans still need that big power. And small became a relative term in the world of Cadillacs and Lincolns. Slowly but surely, though, over time, the simple British roads were faded, even from the British roads, sacrificed to the gods of practicality, safety, and convenience. Motor Trend Rider Bob Hall didn't forget. When Bob Hall went from Motor Trend Rider to Mazda product developer, his bosses gave him the chance to work on his return to simple bug-in-your-teeth mode, eventually resulting in the MX-5 Miata. Since its introduction, there have been a few attempts at duplicating the Miata's simple magic, but all have missed the mark in some way. If you want old-school roadster excitement in a car you don't have to restore or wrench on constantly, the Miata is your only bet. There's an adage in club racing that roughly goes, it doesn't matter what the question is, the answer is Miata. The simple sports car translates its canyon carbon capabilities into trackside success. There is not only a place for Miata in just about every type of club racer, but in most cases, it's the best option available. Want to do autocross? Doing time trials on a course marked out with traffic cones in a parking lot? The Miata couldn't be better suited. Do you like hitting the big boy tracks? The Miata qualifies for a number of production categories, depending on how much you want to bolt on to the little roadster. You can even elect to compete in a series that's nothing but Miatas in the same state of build in the spec Miata series. Even Rallycross and Drifting have a place for the MX-5. Almost entirely on the back of the plucky Miata, Mazda has been able to post that on any given weekend, more Mazdas are raced than any other brand. There are no shortage of cars for an automotive journalist lucky enough to have access to them will empty their bag of superlatives over. Cars like the BMW M3 or the Porsche 911 GT3 can't seem to garner enough praise from people given an opportunity to bring these highly tuned performance machines out on closed roads and open track days. But if you're not an automotive journalist, in order to be allowed in that club, you need money. Lots and lots of money. Click every option on your Grand Touring Miata, and you're still going to find your final price below $40,000, with the starting price around $25,000. While not exactly free, it's a car that's in reach in a way that a BMW or Porsche is not. With 30 years of popularity, if new is out of your price range, there are a sea of used models to choose from, giving you the opportunity to live your gym Clark fantasies. The first Miatas even kind of resemble Clark's Lotus Elon race cars. Stock Miatas are not about power or excess. However, like a proper fun time car, it also lends itself to personalization. There's practically an entire industry built around modding out your Miata to fit your taste. Raise it, lower it, tighten suspension or make it adjustable, bolt on power adders, body kits, you name it. And Anstead of Wheeler Dealers even offers a kit that takes the basic bits from a Miata and allows you to turn it into a reasonable facility of a pre-war Apple Romeo Grand Prix car. If you can't find what you're looking for, bolts and force breathers on a 181 HP engine, you can live up to your modern-day Cobra fantasies by heading over to Monster Miata, where they'll allow you to shoehorn a 5-liter Mustang into the car. Sure, you lose that magic 50-50 weight distribution, but you gain that magic ratio every performance car is looking for. Gobs of horsepower and feather lightweight. Well, except for that big V8. Maybe the best part of the Miata is the simplest. It's just plain fun. There isn't anything between you and the car in the road. Even the gear shifter connects directly to the gearbox that runs through the center of the car to give that much talked about bolt action feel to the shifting. Drop the top with one hand and head towards the twisties and the Miata will eagerly comply, but it won't do the work for you. Instead, it engages you in the process, lets you find the best way in and out of the corner, and more importantly, 
let you make mistakes without launching a six-figure sports car off the road at a speeds. Even in a regular commute, you can sit in your itty-bitty fun machine comfortably in the idea that you're still a fun person. You have a fun car. Some things can become victims of their own success. For over 30 years, the Miata has been a brisk seller with owners holding on to them longer than the average sports car. That means there are always a few use examples for sale for anybody who's looking. But that means that it's just common. Head to the autocross or a track day, and you won't be the only one who heard that the Miata was a good bet. You'll find yourself lost in a sea of Miatas. As shallow as it may seem, or ridiculous, the car is just not special. While there are plenty of Miatas to be had on the used market, it would take a lot of digging to find an unmolested example. Another drawback of that commonality is that no one is out there trying to preserve their numbers matching Miatas. Instead of living their lives preserved in air-conditioned garages only to be rolled out to impress the crowds at cars and coffee, Miatas are, generally speaking, used as intended. That wide collection of modifications and special parts are hard to resist, especially when it helps separate you from the other half-dozen Miatas in the parking lot. Those that aren't driven hard still live hard lives, often in neglect. Reliability is a double-edged sword as it can mold users into foregoing basic maintenance until the car finally can take no more. Oh, smoke, smoke, smoke! Quite like smoke. Smoke, 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 smoke! The flip side of the affordability point is that it relies on you not needing a whole lot of cars. Otherwise, you have to have the money to spend on a sometimes car, while you also own a car that can carry more than one other person or three bags of groceries. Miata has one purpose and one purpose alone. It's simple and to be fun. For roughly the same money, especially when buying used, you can find 300 horsepower all-wheel drive suit coupons that have an extra row of suits and a hatch to bring home more than a few days of groceries. Hot hatches across the board can offer club-level fun with daily driver functionality that the Miata just can't compete with. There is a crack when you build a modern car based on nostalgia. Eventually, the design needs to evolve. You can't offer the same car year in and year out without finding some part of the car to improve or in the case of a retro design, something to modernize. By and large, the Miata has kept things simple. Horsepower has risen to 181 horsepower from its 131 horsepower launch. Chassis and suspension tweaks have been made, as bits and bobs of the car have been added, so have exotic lightweight. Material have also been deployed, resulting in the car only gaining 200 pounds over time. But each new thing added adds complexity to a formula that was meant to eschew complexity. It also adds to the sticker price, slowly moving the Miata out of the affordable category. New Miatas can't even escape the increasingly ubiquitous infotainment screen, though it's often noted to be a bit lacking by the viewers. Perhaps the biggest drawback to the Miata is rooted in its simplicity. It's just not that comfortable. There's always a trade-off when designing the dynamics of the car. How much comfort are you willing to sacrifice for performance, and how much performance are you willing to sacrifice for comfort? In the case of the Miata, it's given just enough deference to the road that you don't need a kidney to drive it. But beyond that, it wants to communicate every bit of the road to you, regardless of how into what the road has to say in the moment. The real question is why has Miata had the market to itself for so long? After 30 years, no one else seemed to crack the formula of a simple drop-top roadster like the British sports cars of old. Even Fiat had to just redress a Miata, and it couldn't match the magic.